I cause any hate, bitterness, and then all of any of you, and work on that. I ask you maybe forgive me. Find your heart someday. I know not today, but someday. Just move on from this life. And may justice be served today. Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video right here, we're gonna talk about a guy who is just it's absolutely disturbing and uh, pretty terrifying. This is the case of Sean Great, a serial killer who was active in Ohio from 2005 to 2016. It's believed he had about uh, five victims, but with nearly all serial killers, that is up for debate, my friends. He had issues with the law in the past, but serial killer wasn't on the mind of police until one victim escaped and made a 911 call in 2016 and the horrific tale of what Sean really did was brought to light. This is definitely one of the most disturbing cases I've covered. So without further ado, let's get into it. On September 13th, 2016, at 6.48 a.m., a 911 call was made from Ashland. It's a city about an hour from Cleveland. In this frankly alarming 911 call, a woman tells the 911 operator she's been kidnapped by a man named Sean Great. 911, what is the address to your emergency? I have the street laundry mat. What is it? Where's the street laundry mat? What's the problem? I've been abducted. Who abducted you? Sean, great. Where's he at now? Asleep. Where's he sleeping at? In the bedroom. I'm in the bedroom with them. Please hurry. She called while he was sleeping, and she had taken his phone, but she was still in the room with him. She called for help, but she couldn't really say where she was just that it was an abandoned house. She sounds, as you can imagine, absolutely traumatized. Does he have a weapon? He's got a taser. Is there any way you can get out of the building? I don't know without waking him and I'm scared. Is there a bathroom in the house? The bedroom is closed and he made it so it would make noise. And if you told him you had to go to the bathroom, he would do something to you? Yeah, because he had me tied up. Are you tied up now? Well, I... Yeah, but I kind of freed myself. Is it his phone you have? Yeah. Are they on the way? Yeah, we have officers we're sending. Okay. Please send them up. Are you bleeding from anywhere? Not anymore. Where were you bleeding from? You don't have to talk if you don't need to, okay? Do you know where he lives? Oh, no. I'm a smoker. What? I'm a smoker. Do you hear any officers outside? No. Okay, they're in the area. At one point, she accidentally triggers his taser, and she fears she woke him up, but he went back to sleep. Get out, get out, hurry up, hurry up, get out of here. Where is he? Bedroom, please. Don't hear The police finally found her, and it was revealed that she had been held there for three days as a sex slave. The woman, who has only ever been identified as Jane Doe, had known Sean for about a month and a half before he kidnapped her. And it was while they were having lunch together, that's when he took her. After he told her he would clothes to give her. They walked to his place, and that's when he overpowered her. So when he started pulling the Bible from my hands, I just looked up, like, curious, like, what are you doing? And um, that's when he said, Thank you. 
That's when he said you're not going anywhere. Sean was arrested, but so much more about who Sean really was and the things he had done was just about to come out. Sean Great was born in 1976. Sean's parents divorced when he was six years old, with his mother giving custody of Sean and his brother to the dad, though he still continued to live with his mother. As a teenager, he was described as charming, always smiling, a real hit with the ladies. However, multiple women also found him to be controlling, jealous, and violent, which is not the best mix. When he was 18 years old, Sean was arrested for grabbing his girlfriend's throat. At 23, he broke into a 17-year-old pregnant girlfriend's home, choked her, and later threatened to kill her. Eight months later, he assaulted her again, and her sister this time, while holding a butcher knife after hiding all night under her couch. Which is why it's important to always check on your couches for lads with butcher knives. Could be Sean. He spent about four years in prison for that one and was released in 2003. But he would continue to have assault, domestic violence, marijuana and alcohol charges laid against him over the coming years. And more. Over the years he would exploit people, especially vulnerable women, any way he could. He fathered three children, two with girlfriends and one from a brief marriage. Court documents indicate his ex-wife once claimed, Sean said, If I can't see my daughter, then no one will. I wonder what he meant by that. Christina Hildreth met Sean in 2005 and they stayed together for about five years. And she said that after they began living together, Sean was upset her children were with them as well and characterized him as mentally abusive for the most part. Sean wasn't the sharing type. Uh, he kind of wanted her all for himself. Which, you know, I mean, he did kidnap someone, so that makes sense. For the end, it was quite too, you never knew what was going to set him off. One, you know, one minute he was happy, laughing, fine. The next minute, you, you know, he's looking at you evil and he's just out there. He had just that way about making you very uncomfortable. Your skin crawl, just, it was really creepy. In June 2010, she was assaulted repeatedly by Sean, including multiple blows to the face and being grabbed by the throat. Part of her hand was also fractured. She was able to get Sean to let her go to the emergency room, and she initially told staff she had fallen. However, when Sean left her alone in the room with a nurse, she told staff what had really happened. And when the police were notified, Sean just booked it. He was caught four days later. When, get this, uh, Christina told police that she believed Sean was hiding inside her couch, and police found him there. I got back from, you know, staying with my mom, went to go feed my cats, get in my house. I could tell somebody was there. He had run from the hospital when the police came. What did he do? He hid in the, what did he hide? He, had, he hid in the bottom of my sofa. He'd actually climbed up into the bottom of the sofa and he hid there. I had went home to feed the cats. Things weren't right. The toilet seat was up. Food was not where it should have been. How chilling is that that he was It's in... very chilling. Of course they're starting to notice. There's a grown man crammed inside of a couch, for Christ's sakes. They're going to notice. <laughs> He was sentenced to 180 days in jail. He kind of laid low for a while after that and became homeless, doing odd jobs here and there. That is, until, well. On August 16th, 2016, a woman went missing in Ashland, 29-year-old Elizabeth Griffith. She suffered from a number of mental health issues. She wasn't reported missing, however, for over three weeks on September 8th, 2016. Her apartment was empty, and since last being seen at Walmart, no one had seen her for a while. On September 8, 2016, another woman, 43-year-old Stacy Stanley, disappeared also in Ashland. Her family filed a missing persons report the next day, and when they found her car, it seemed like it had been driven by someone else. It would be less than a week later that Jane Doe would make that 911 call and Sean would be arrested. The bodies of Elizabeth Griffith and Stacy Stanley were found in the house Sean was arrested in. They had both been strangled to death. Prosecutors reveal gruesome details about the deaths of two of his alleged victims, including how their bodies were hidden inside of an Ashland home. Veteran BCI agent Ed Staley would later process an unimaginable crime scene. Black duct tape was all over an upstairs bedroom closet door, and there was a horrible smell. Significant odor, yes. Describe it, please. 
It was deplorable. Inside the closet and under a pile of clothing was the body of Liz Griffith. Prosecutors believe she had been strangled. Staley testified Griffith was naked, her body badly decomposing, and it appeared her arms and legs were tied. And on the concrete floor of the basement, another horrific find, the body of Stacy Hicks, under a blanket and piles of trash, also a victim of strangulation. Item of cloth, I don't really know if it was clothing, but it was a ligature or a binding or a restraint that was around the neck of that human corpse. The suspected serial killer showed little emotion as Staley identified other pieces of evidence found inside that Ashland house of horrors and displayed for the jury, including Stacey Hicks's car keys and weapons, a stun gun and brass knuckles that may have been used against the victims. On the day of his arrest, Sean also led police to a third murder victim, Candice Cunningham in a neighboring county. While in jail, Sean also confessed to a fourth victim, Rebecca Lacey. Her body had been found in 2015, but her death was originally ruled an overdose. Sean said he strangled her after she stole four dollars from him in a bar. I wonder what he does when he gets really angry. And before it was over, he confessed to a fifth, Dana Lowry, whose body was found in 2007, but remained unidentified. He confessed to killing Dana, saying it was his first kill. And he did it because he thought she was part of a magazine scam. She was finally identified in June 2019 via DNA. Sean Great would fully cooperate with police, even demonstrating how he would uh, kill these women. On September 29, 2016, Sean Great pleaded not guilty to 23 charges outlined in an indictment, including the murders of Elizabeth Griffith and Stacey Stanley, even though he would tell the police and the press that he had done it. Sean's attorneys later filed a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. Prosecutors sought the death penalty. They were already dead, Sean Great wrote to me in one of two letters dated September 28th written in careful cursive on ruled loose-leaf paper, apologizing for sloppiness because he had to write with a small pencil. In his first letter, Great tells me about facing himself in the mirror and promises to share exactly why he did it. And that's exactly what he did in the second letter, which I found folded neatly inside the original signed copy of his indictment, the same document that lists his aggravated murder charges in the death of Stacey Stanley and Elizabeth Griffith. The charges came after a third woman who escaped led police to their bodies in this Ashland home last month. They were already dead, just their bodies were flopping wherever they can flop, but their minds were dead, Great wrote, blaming government assistance for taking the minds of his victims. And so he finished the job with what he calls a horrible act of violent behavior. And he says this story began five years ago when he first reached out for government assistance. But he said he couldn't get enough, writing that he received $197 a month on a food card, though many bodies receive $700, he wrote. Great uses the words bodies, victims, and people interchangeably. And the letter is scattered with Bible verses about death. The defense and the prosecution both jointly requested and obtained a gag order. Uh, preventing Sean from communicating with the media, something serial killers tend to love to do. It's all about the attention. He must have been living it up, loving the attention he was getting. Uh, but they put a stop to that because he was telling the judge one thing and the media something else. Sean's trial began on April 9th, 2018. Well, today's a good day. Mainly for all of you guys and myself. You know, hope we could just move on from all this. You know, I don't know exactly. You know, I can't say I'm normal, but you know, I know right from wrong. And uh, mainly, just the if I cause any hate, bitterness, and then all of any of this, work on that. I ask you maybe forgive me. 
find in your heart someday. I know not today, someday. Just move on from this life. And you may justice be served today. That's most important. Elizabeth, Stacy, and Lori, thank you for all your time. And this mess, I'm sorry for all human beings to have to list, hear this. Okay? I'm sorry. I can't, can't change nothing. Believe me, I would. Not for me, but for you guys. Thank you. On May 2nd, Sean pled guilty to 15 of the charges against him, but not to the murder of Stacy and Elizabeth. But he was found guilty of them, and everything else, unsurprisingly. On June 1st, he was sentenced to death. We, the jury, being duly impaneled and sworn, do hereby find that the aggravating circumstances that the defendant was found guilty of committing do outweigh the mitigating factors presented in this case by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We therefore unanimously find that the sentence of death should be imposed upon Sean M. Gray. Guilty on all counts. That was a verdict the jury handed down in the murder trial of Sean Gray. It's not about him, it's about my mother. His mother, Stacy Stanley, one of two women killed in Ashland at the hands of Sean Gray. Basically, you know, I'm just thankful that he got what he's coming to him, you know. Like my mom does deserve justice, you know. Everything he's putting on there, it's all about him. Sean, Sean, Sean. It's not about Sean, it's about my mother, it's about this other lady, Elizabeth, and every other woman that's in on that situation, you know. An initial execution date was set upon conviction for September 13th, 2018. However, the execution was stayed due to a pending appeal, still pending to this day. In March 2019, Sean also pled guilty to the murders of Rebecca Lacey and Candice Cunningham and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. In September 2019, Sean also pled guilty to the murder of Dana Lowry and was sentenced to life in prison without parole plus 16 years. Really laying it on him. As they should. He's still there uh, waiting away for the old needle. This, I think, is up there with some of the most disturbing cases I've ever covered. And you gotta think, if Jane Doe hadn't made that 911 call and been rescued and then Sean arrested, who knows, he could still be out there, like, to this very day, doing what he was doing. And it's especially worrying when you think that he, he took Elizabeth Griffith in the middle of August, Stacey Stanley at the start of September, Jane Doe in the middle of September, he was escalating, he was... There, previously, there had been years between his crimes, and now it was like a couple of days. Maybe he wanted to be caught, maybe he got careless, or maybe he just had had that urge. Though, uh, thankfully, he ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Not counting, you know, hell. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away, and if you want to see future ones, subscribe if you want to. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves, my game.